far away. You want them as close as they possibly can be and so that they're kind of your helper and you want to have as many distracting things on yourself. So usually I try and wear earrings like that that are distracting so they've got all sorts of visual opportunities. And then usually they go for things like this, right? So you try and have the oil not in a breakable container like this, yeah. right? And then when you've got an oil that they can get in their mouth, and we have this little boy designed to be a massage therapist, so he's starting early. And just checking out that we got the right quality of coconut oil. Okay. So, and then I get the parents always to help me do the undressing so that I'm around them, kind of handling them, but they're not staring right at me and figuring that isn't mom, okay? So if you've got mom on the visuals, and then, then we get him out of his things. And can you come around here? And your name is? Alice. Alice, but come closer. And if there's any kids around, you try and involve them because these are the ones that are gonna change the world, right? You want them to be impressed with baby massage at an early age. So if you can hold on to that for me, he'll want it, but don't give it to him yet. <laughs> so, and then we'll just undress him while he's busy rearranging everything. Yep, and I'll, I'll get one so I can manage the proper stuff. And he dressed in his best for this. It's very nice. Thank you, Mom. Takes after his dad's button-down shirt there. That is, oh, and blue eyes, holy smoke. So I use, what you've got, Alice, is coconut oil. Do you use coconut oil at home for cooking too? Yeah, it's just the best. So we get, now the thing about a slippery baby and a narrow massage table is not really a nice marriage. So although the tables are great this way, what I try and do is have the, and I like all that. So what I do is I have them so that this is always moving. Like I don't try and do as much picking up as I just do like maneuvering the, the whatever they're on. Sometimes it's like a, a change uh, mat and you can really swivel those around and they're more hard pressed. But that, you're managing the oil really well. And then if you're shooting um, movies, which is usually people get all their iPhones out and clip it, you don't want to be shooting right up the baby's privates or else you got to blur it if you're ever showing it to somebody else. So, um, so and when we've got three months, right? Six and a half. Oh, right. Okay. So three months is easy. Four months is a wiggle. Six is like a moving target. So that sometimes I'll start like this. And then I have the mom that way with a lot of toys. And then if no matter what, he's not going that way, then I just go in the direction that he's going. Trying to get a hold on him and be greasy means that you're over a good launch area. So that the main thing is you can show that you don't have to have him lying down and looking like he's already relaxed and massaged, but any of these kinds of distractions. So, <laughs> he knows his dad is there, is more to the point. If his dad could come just a little closer. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, right. The combination of massage and the dad is a very good positive reflex conditioning here. So I think as long as I put him down and he keeps looking at his dad, yep, we're in business. But you never know. So I'm going to show you all the difficult things first. The hardest thing is tummies when you've got babies going. And can I have a little of yours, Alice? Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to ring right across and then we're going to do, you are so perfect. We're gonna go down the diaphragm and come a little closer so I'm not yelling. And we're gonna go like this. He has such a tough tummy. Do you have a tough tummy too? Strong tummy? Yes. And then we can do the scooping like this. And if the baby's constipated, he's taking the wallpaper off, right? And they're really uncomfortable. So you do the tummy like directly on. You do the back where all the innervation is. So you're doing lumbar area and sacrum. And then we're going to attempt, would you like that one too? I think so. 
Okay, and if you bring up the toys right away, you won't notice that he didn't get that. Okay, so here we go for leg pumping 101. So we've got both legs up, and we're going to alternate one to knee, chest, and this one. I've got my little finger, my pointer finger underneath the knee, attempting to bend the knee without causing any harm. Excuse me. That leg's going to slip on it. It has. And I've been trying that trick. Okay. So what you do is first you rub it and see if we can get It's coming this way. There you go. <laughs> and so what you would do is do all the massage you can ahead of time. Very good. Thank you. And I've never had such a good assistant. You know this is. But I mean, the most important thing that you're learning is baby massage is just you roll with the punches. You know, you just make sure that you just keep it going. And to be able to get the hips and be able to get all in here makes the tummy work better, right? Mm. So it's the same. Here we go. Got a good grip on the, yep. Can you believe his muscles? Here we go. So let's try that one more time and just see how these legs go. So we've got that one up, this one up. And that one up, this one up. And then this is the tricky one where you get them tucked up. And there we go. Get the, yeah, here we go. So you tuck them up and then you go around and round. So what we're doing is getting that whole sacral area, getting a massage, because I'm pushing down. So he's getting that compression happening in his lower back. And then, while we've got him in such a wonderful chewing state, I can get right underneath and I lever up. So I push down on the table and lever up so you can see the whole hip rolling around. High end cocoa butter, you've got good taste for sure. So while things are running well, hold on to that, Alice. I'm going for it. So now we're going to take and do the part that usually causes them to. Thank you very much. Let's see if his interest is pretty high in the container. <laughs> but yeah, and you can see how he'll let go. So he's teething. And this is teething 101. So if you can get right in that temporal mandibular joint, just come real close. And if you can get right around the ears themselves, I always encourage newborns, like we're talking minutes old, start working the jaw. Because as long as you've got them so they're kind of conditioned to having this joint handled, then when it comes to when you really want it, when they're, you know, keeping you up all night teething, so you're able to get in there. So very good cooperation here. While it's going so well in that department, I'll show you, these are all the uncomfortable things. So you get all the forehead. If you've got a baby that's arrived with stork marks, where they've got, or they've got the, um, from any of the forcep deliveries, then you've got some kinds of marks, and you can literally massage right on the bruising, and it absorbs so much faster. Not that you're running one bruise without massage and one bruise with massage, you know, to just see how fast it does go, but if you've tried it on yourself, massage is amazing for absorbing that subcutaneous hemorrhaging. Okay, so let's see, we've done the leg pumping, and I'll try and show you, aha, sideline. Can you guys grab those teddy bears beside you there? So, with sideline, you've got one hand here, and then Haley, if you grab one of those, mm -hmm. and duplicate, and then Alice, take a teddy bear there, drop the oil. Okay, so what you want to do is have one hand on the teddy bear's tummy, so you can have the teddy bear facing head away, head towards me, feet towards you. That's good. Then put the teddy bear on its side, yep, and put one hand on the tummy, like this. This hand is better on the tummy. Then with the back hand, massage the back. There you go. And we've got Mr. Moving Target, that's right. And then do both, front, back, front, back, front, back. Okay, let's roll, everybody. We're rolling to the other side. Here we go. Oh, you are such a great boy. And then back front. And I do kind of more of a big palmer, Haley. Yeah, and big palmer around the tummy. 
And then what I do, if you hold on here, I'll show you what I do when kids are because I try and do sibling massage. You've got a little brother, right? Come on around here and then everyone can see Alice. So what I do with kids, just like what I do with adults, put your hand on mine. Okay, and put your hand on mine. Okay, so she gets a feel right away of the rhythm, okay? Then you put your hands on, I'll put mine, and then you do the same thing, right? So you get that idea right away. Same with here. So put your thumbs right on mine, and I'll take you for a ride. So we got two thumbs on one side of the spine. Same as if you were massaging <laughs> seniors, normal people. So we're now, see if he's on his tummy. Yep. Yeah. And then we're going to do the alternate thumb needy. So it's just that we're alternating one, two, one, two, and press right on my thumb. So it's really great if you can teach kids how old you If you can teach nine year olds to be able to massage your home or two, two year old brothers, then that's how we're going to change the world, right? So I always try and get folks like you that are pros right on my thumbs. Right on my thumb. Come here, right. There you go. To, to when you're doing baby massage, get the siblings involved right away. Good work. <laughs> okay, so now we've got good work, eh? <laughs> so, one bear down, and Haley, if you go over here, and just, I think if you're around the front, that'd be good. Here we go. He's up on his feet. Alice <laughs> is doing a really good job. And, and she's been practicing for her two-year-old brother. Okay, so we're going to see if he'll sit down. And now we're going to do his shoulder. So Alice, put your hands on mine. You got him in the front? Okay, here we go. So come right around. Okay, thumbs on mine, and away we go. So you get the idea to involve the kids hands-on right away. So try that on your brother. He's got a little toy. What's his name? Keon. Keon? Keon, Alice is going to give you a little sample. So Alice, you do Keon and I'll do it here. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, got your thumbs going? Good work. Keon, how's that going? Is that good? So the more that's it, I've had enough. But that's as fast as you want to do it to maybe <laughs> Good work, Alice. Okay. It's okay. Thanks, Alice. She's pushing me. And if you wouldn't mind giving me your email address, then I can send you the question. Sure. So, Alice, you want to show this at your brother's wedding? <laughs> So are there any questions that you have about, it's more about teaching than just about baby massage. I've just had a few years of how to make every mistake you could possibly make. I'm just curious about, um, even like toddlers that are struggling with sleep. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions that massage? Yeah. First what you do, toddlers struggling with sleep. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I get the parents to do is Epsom salt with the kid. So you get in the bath, in the bath yeah. yeah, and you just make it as long as literally. The thing to remember is a fussy baby, is a tired baby, is a noisy baby. So that is the most important thing about professionals, is to pass it on to people that noise is a compliment. You've, you've tired them out, you've fatigued them, and then they're gonna clump out. Like not to expect that you're doing anything wrong if babies are starting to make noise like I'm out of here, I've had enough. But the whole thing of being able to tolerate that as a therapist is much harder than as a parent because it looks like you're doing something wrong and your professionalism is on the line. And that, that's hard to take whether I've done it for 40 years or four years. So I always encourage people when they've got a baby that is what I call colicky, ants keeping the house up all night, and it isn't usually boys. Boys have that reputation, but it's to be able to do everything you do as an adult. So you take the hot up some salt bath, or dad's in the bath, and you just try and make it as long and warm and that kind of thing. And then you massage them forever and they will tend to conk out. Sometimes it takes, okay, and then we do it again an hour later. But it's breaking that cycle. 
it's when they've left it so long that it's we're now in the second week that it's hard to change that but it's still it's pretty bulletproof you know you can't really rub them um, for a prolonged period of time without having a huge neurological uh, um, change shift yeah any other questions about special needs kids or post-surgical or any of that kind of exciting stuff it's not normal it really is great it, are most of you massage therapists are, are you mostly graduates okay anyone a student we got one student Oh great, okay. Because one of the things, like when we had Sutherland Chan, it was Sutherland Chan School and Teaching Clinic. So the teaching clinic part of it was the really big deal because it was all about pass it along. She's right there. They're all there. Pass it along like immediately. Like so that when we had people coming who were pregnant, we would have the dad come along or a friend or mom or sister or whatever. So tandem massaging, I am kind of evangelical about tandem massaging because it's amazing. You might only have one time that you're in the hospital and someone's going to die, say, you never know, but say by the time the morning comes, you don't have a chance to get back there and show the rest of the family. But if I have Haley massage that leg while I'm doing this one and all we go around, then I can leave her and she can do exactly the same thing with the next relative that's trying to get there before the last breath. So it's really important to do it like right away. Because you not only might not have another chance, but you get them hands on and speeding up anybody's recovery, whether it's a back injury, whether it's even people that come to you because of um, you know insurance like ICBC patients and people like that is still get the family involved, even though they're relying on your professionalism. <laughs> There's hardly anything that we do that is rocket science. Most of it is all pass alongable, and most of it was all what was used before drugs. So it's really important to take everything that you're learning and just keep it up going out the door. You know, so the public knows that we're here to educate them. So let me show you um, the legs. There'll be a moving target, but we're used to that. Um, we're going to have him on his back for about 30 seconds. Do you want me to stay here? Yeah. Okay. So if you come close, you guys, one of the things with the legs is we do legs traditionally like this. But when you've got the kids, you can do a lot of it where it's not something I employ in adults except for my spinal cord injury folks. But to be able to get the leg up in the air and be able to work it down. And they already know that this leg, his right, is more stiff than the left. So it's really great that way to work right underneath the hip. And although he moves all over the place, for babies that are despondent, like a lot of kids that are born with special needs, come around here. So what we do is we can still work, just like I do in spinal cord injury or ICU or when people are in traction, you just lever up from underneath. And as long as you're, exactly, that's exactly it. I know, what is going on underneath there? And as long as you're working up like that, and the nice thing is, he's now, in the 25 minute mark of being massaged and you can see the change he's starting to get that look like this might be where the gaze is longer and he's not you know at about 50 percent rambunctiousness but often then he'll conk out you know and be able to have a deeper sleep so whoever asked about the, the evening stuff this is a baby that is probably good for a, a nice nap, you know. Oh, that is such a Did you ask him to do that? I know. I know. I really... And this is so nice to have a, a brand new experience like this going on. I've only taught it for like about, you know, 45 years and nobody's really eaten my face at the end or my ear. And it's the only time I didn't wear my earrings, so I know that he didn't swallow it when he chewed on the lobe of my ear. And uh, I just can't thank you enough. Haley and I have been planning this for a couple of weeks, but I had no idea 
it would be such a profound experience for me. So thank you, thank you. And I'd like you to all know that it's my first book launch, so all the books are for free, and I'll autograph them. And thank you, thank you. Hey, good work. That was really good chewing. It's gonna go right now. Everybody. Okay. I'll sign books now that I'm never going to recover from that. Thank you.